What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with three videos today. We are doing the Encore, we are doing Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and we're doing Sisters. But first, we got to start with BET Presents the Encore, you guys. That is my show. I am living for this show. Very bear, I refuse to miss an episode of BET Presents the Encore. Carlos King has really done his thing. And I was watching an interview yesterday with Carlos King. He did an interview with the Jasmine brand, right? So the Jasmine brand, the, um, the, you know, um, one of the, I don't know if they were talking, all right? So they were talking about him with Real Housewives of Atlanta, right? And he said that he was, you know, he's, he's been asked to come back to Real Housewives of Atlanta more than once, but he's turned it down because he's focusing his attention onto his production company, which smart move. I, I, I understand what he's saying because I'm actually in that spot in my life right now. Like, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, I'm looking for jobs, but I'm not, ha you know, I, I get, I can get a job. It's no problem, but I want to be happy with what I do. I want to love what I do. I don't want to go and clock in on somebody's time clock every day doing the same thing day in and day out and I have no enjoyment, no fulfillment, nothing. So I got, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that I listened to Carlos say that. And, you know, she said, and the, what it is, Carlos doesn't want to go back to Real Housewives of Atlanta because his team is not producing Real Housewives of Atlanta. That is truly entertainment. So he would be working for them. Why would he go from being his own boss, his own, you know, his own boss to working for someone else again? You know what I'm saying? So he was like, if if the opportunity presented itself where they invited his, you know, his production company to run Real Housewives of Atlanta, he would absolutely go back. Bravo, Andy, because Andy speaks highly of Carlos King. So, Andy, why don't you just why don't you ex exactly why don't you listen to what the fans say? Because last season of Real Housewives of Atlanta was just not the best at all. But we reviewed it, but it just wasn't good. But isn't truly in the. Truly Original is behind Real Housewives of the Potomac as well, right, you guys? So it's interesting how Real Housewives of the Potomac was good, but Atlanta wasn't. I wonder what the I wonder what the disconnect is. I always wonder what that is. But um, yeah, Carlos is doing his damn thing with you know Bell Collective with um Love and Mary Chunksville, which that returns July seventeenth, which is the day after my birthday. July seventeenth, you um now I'm going to review that. I don't know how it's going to work because I'm trying to go somewhere for my birthday. I don't know what I'm going to do for my birthday, but we're going to do something for my birthday. But yeah, Carlos got Love and Marriage Huntsville, Bell Collective, and BET Presents the Encore, which he's doing really good. But um, yeah, so I don't spend two minutes talking about this, but I just want to talk about that. So before we get into this review, you guys, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you're not already subscribed to my channel, why are we still going out on this date with each other? And you know, at the end of the bit, at the end of the date, they bring me the bill. I gotta pay for my meal, and you pay for yours. Hit that subscribe button, you guys. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell button. Hit all the buttons on the channel. But um, without with that being said, without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and just get into this episode review. This was a great episode to me. Let's talk about it. All right, you guys. So it made more sense to me in this episode what the girls are doing. So they keep talking about an album. I'm like. It's not a, when they said what it really was. I'm like, so it's not an actual album. It's an EP, right? So they have five songs on this on this EP. Three of the songs, all nine of the ladies have to be on at least three of have to be on three of the songs, right? I'm like, okay, that's cool. Got it. Um. So then we see the twins, right? So the twins they go out. This is the aftermath after what happened last week's episode with Misha, right? So the twins go out to the hot tub and they feel that Misha is intimidated by them. Now, do I feel that Misha is intimidated by the twins? Absolutely not. I think the twins, it's the twins person, it's the twins personality, number one. It's their, it's their personalities, it's their egos, and it's their approach. More specifically, it's their approach. The twins have, the twins are like sandpaper. The twins are like sandpaper. They are rough and rugged. Um, they also feel like Aubrey is playing both sides. And honestly, when the twins said that, I actually agreed with the twins because Aubrey is doing that. It's going back to this whole divisive thing. Aubrey is playing all sides of the, all sides of the house. She wants to be on records with the twins, but then she wants it to be like, you know, it, the group thing. 
So then they also say that Aubrey needs vocal training. And in this episode, I am going to 1,000% agree with them. Aubrey needs vocal training. So then we see Aubrey. So she's talking to Elijah, right? And she's talking to him about the twins, how the twins have talked shit about Elijah. Now, unless the, unless this, you know, unless the editing didn't, unless they didn't show it to us in editing, I've never really saw the twins talk about Elijah. What we do see with the twins is the twins talking about their talents, which, like I said in last week's review, we are not going to take away from the twins that they are very talented. But the thing with the twins is the twins are what? Cocky. That's my issue with the twins. So she says that um, now Aubrey says that she doesn't like the way that the, the twins produce the record. That she, you know that she want the way she, they don't produce the record the way she wants. And I'm just like, okay, well if the twins don't produce the records the way that you want, then why don't you see? This is my thing. I I I, I realize this. I'm like, okay, so some of these girls don't know how to engineer, don't know how to mix and master. So I'm like, okay, if you don't know how to do that shut up period like that's my whole thing or if you have a, if you have a concept or you have an idea why don't you then if you don't want to work with the twins why don't you then say go to elijah and cosine and be like hey elijah hey cosine you know i got this idea for this song you know i got the lyrics in my head and i got how the melody wants i got how i want the melody to be i got how i want the beat to, want the, i want you know how, how the beat should go like why don't y'all kick it old school like when we was in, like when I was in high school and middle school, you grab. I'm trying. Let me see if I got a pen or a pencil. Got my toothbrush. Like you grab your, you know, you grab, you grab something and you just, you know, you just. Like you get, you get a pen, you get a pencil, you get whatever you want to get. And you start tapping to whatever your, you know, you start tapping to whatever the beat you want to beat, want it to be. And then with Elijah and Cosine, you can be like, you know, I got this idea in my head, like, and you just start tapping it out. You just start tapping it out. Like, that's actually how you, I mean, that's really how music works in the first place. You just, you have an idea. And if you are, if you um, play a musical instrument, you can get your instrument. You can start, you know, playing it, whatever. Aubrey? You know, honestly, I don't really see it for the Michelin Tire Man. I don't see it for the Michelin Tire Man in this episode. So then Elijah's like, you know, he's talking about he, you know, um, he got three songs charting, and the Twins had the least amount of success. I was like, okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Before this show, I had never heard of an Elijah or a Cosine. No shades either one of them, but I just never really heard of them. But I did find I did I did find Elijah on um Instagram. He, he's, he's definitely doing some, you know, he's definitely doing big things. So I'm, I can't knock his, I can't knock him or Cosign. I'm just saying that without this show, I would have never known who they were. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So the twins, they're talking to Keely, right? And Keely, <laughs> if I didn't realize it before now, Keely has a huge hard on for Ivory. Why? I don't know. So the twins, like I said, the twins are talking to Keely and she needs to, um, they tell her they're telling Keely that she needs to talk to Aubrey. Keely says no. Then Keely says that you know she and Aubrey had not talked for years prior to coming on the show. But when when they found out they were both going to be on the show, that's when she said um, Aubrey came to her talking about oh I love you this this and that. And Aubrey came in and girl she said girl shut the fuck up. Her words is that shut the fuck up. So Aubrey says don't you don't do shit. All you do is talk shit. That is true. That is 100% true about Keely. Keely has not done a lick of nothing this entire time. Like Ivory said a few weeks in, in, in the episode two. All um, Keely does is walk around with, you know, a glass of wine in her pajamas. Or them ugly fashion she's wearing. She said, but you don't do shit. I did your job. Well, Ivory, with that creative directing, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little bit confused by it. You know, your little vision board, I mean, I, I'm going to give you an A for effort, but, uh, girl, I was confused by that vision board. I didn't understand what, I didn't know what that vision board stood for, but I was going to, I will give you credit for putting in the work that Keely was not putting in, but that vision board was kind of lost on my mind, but whatever. So then the ladies, you know, Cedar calls the ladies together, right? She asked them, what happened? Hell, ain't nothing happening. That's what's happened. Um... And they all can't get on the same page. And I, you know, 
it's so funny. Um, whose video was I watching? I think it was Erica's video that I was watching, her first review. And Erica said something that did stand out. You know, they talk about the fact that girl groups can't get along, but it's all groups in particular. It's not just girl groups. It's all groups. Ooh, hello. Y'all need to stop coming to this part. Hmm. Booty just jiggling. Hmm. Hello. Okay. We're going to go for a walk in a little bit after we edit these videos. <laughs> um, where was I at? So, yeah. Um, the thing is, it's not just girl groups that can't get along. It's guy groups as well. Like, when you put people together, the egos will start. Sometimes the egos will clash. And that's what I think, you know, might be happening here with these ladies. So, she tells the ladies that if y'all really can't, if y'all can't get it together... Oh, he wants to. Pl so, if you guys don't hear, you might not hear. You may or may not hear. So, there are two young ladies that are walking on this trail, right? And they have a dog, but the dog isn't on a leash. So, with the, when they're trying to walk, the dog, the dog, he um, he he ran away from them. So. One of the girls grabbed him, grabbed the dog. And he started, you know, he started screaming, and he jumped out of her arm. Uh, he just wants to have fun and play. Um, where are we at? Like, this is a distraction today. Today, the park is a distraction. But yeah, so Sita tells the ladies that you know, if they really can't get if they can't get together on one page, Aubrey, who is the queen, can override them and make all the decisions. Which I would not be cool with that. Or they can replace Aubrey, which I would be I would be more fitting with that. Let's replace Aubrey, which we're gonna talk about Aubrey in this episode. <coughs> so then Sita also tells the ladies that they need to come up with a name for the group, right? Girl, that's gonna be easier said than done. Confusion should be the name of the group. Confusion, 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 confusion should be the name of the group. That should be the name of the group. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So then we see the twins, right? So the twins, they gonna talk to Misha, right? So the twins um, tell Misha that, you know, they think she's amazing. I'm like, girl, that is a crock of bull. If I ain't never saw some. They tell her that they think she's amazing. They think she's talented. Girl, I don't care who tell her because, um, now I'm not going to take away from Misha's talent, but in this, in this particular moment, Misha ain't got no vocals. Misha ain't got no vocals. You know, it's the drinking, it's the smoking, it's most of the smoking for me. So... Misha, they apologize to Misha, which I would take the I would take the twins' apology with a grain of salt, and Misha apologizes to the twins. I'm like, yeah, I'll take all these apologies with the finest grain of salt. So then we see Pam. So Pam goes in the studio, right, and then Felicia joins her. So Pam has come up with this inspirational or gospel track, if you will. It's called "Only God Knows," and. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Now, in the preview of last week's episode, uh, this week's episode, you know, in the preview from last week of this week's episode, I was like, "Oh God, Pam is coming with the gospel or inspirational song." Girl, go find Tina and Erica Campbell and join Mary and Mary. But you know what? I will say, listening to this gospel, listen to this this song that Pam did, I actually liked it. And I even said, I don't know if I tweeted this or if I said this in last week's video, but you know, with this whole um, this whole thing. I think what they could do is to appease Pam, do like what they used to do back in the 90s. If you guys remember back in the 90s, especially with Destiny's Child, at the end of Destiny's Child's albums, they had an outro, right? And it was always a gospel song. Like if you guys go back to um, The Writings on the Wall, that is my favorite Destiny's Child album of all time, The Writings on the Wall. And if you go to number 16, of the, I think it's number 16, amazing, you know, the outro is Amazing Grace. Amazing great hey, hey, hey. How sweet, how sweet, sweet the sound, the sound, sound that say, 
saved, saved the rain. Um, yeah, y'all know what it is. Go listen to it. If you haven't, if you don't know nothing about that album, go listen to it. So I think what they could do is they could do that for Pam, put that as the outro song, and it will work. Baby, Misha. When Misha got in that suit in that booth, I was like, oh my god, this sounds terrible. Girl, did you smoke a pack of cigarettes before you went into the studio? Because you just... Like last week's episode, Misha did not sound bad. This week's episode, Misha went on a decline. I'm like, girl, you is like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down. You go up, you go down. You go up and down. Up and down. Irish. I was slightly surprised by Irish. Irish did not sound bad in this... In this um, when she got in the studio. Somebody who did... Somebody who... Now, see, here's my thing. Aubrey is not necessarily feeling this song. I'm like, oh, okay. Aubrey's not feeling this song. Okay, whatever. Not surprised, right? Aubrey's not feeling this song, right? Aubrey, Aubrey, Aubrey. Aubrey actually got on my nerves in this episode, to keep it real with you guys. Let's move on. I don't know how long this video is going to be. <laughs> All right, you guys. So we do see, um, as Keely, Keely is talking to... Aaliyah, I believe that's the um the uh choreographer's name, right? So Keely was talking to Aaliyah, and not that long into the conversation, who bump who comes in? Aubrey O'Day, the Michelin Tire Man. So Aubrey comes in because Aubrey has put I guess I guess Aubrey has put together the set, right? For the performances. And Aaliyah likes Aubrey's set. And they're talking about this song Skeletons, right? Now they did play a, they did show them in the studio recording skeletons, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the skeleton song is not for me. I can hear it being played on the radio, but it just is not a good song to me. I like the other songs, like the ones we talked about last week. So on skeletons, it is supposed to be Aubrey, Fallon, and Felicia, right? And then Shamari comes in and says, Shamari, Shamari says she wants to be on that record. I'm like, oh okay, I'm here for it. I think if Shamari does hop on that on that track, it may sound better than what it did. Cause listening to that track, it didn't really it just was it didn't catch my ear. So Aubrey, you can look at Aubrey and see that she's feeling some type of way about that. I'm like, oh, Aubrey doesn't want Shamari on the record. Okay. So then we see that, you know, so we see as Shamari, Fallon, and Felicia are coming up with choreography for skeletons with Aaliyah who's missing Aubrey meanwhile the other ladies um, are down in the studio and they are putting their vocals on Pam's song right once again like I said Misha girl you just like a roller coaster up and down so like I said a few minutes ago Aubrey does feel a way about Shamari being on skeletons and I don't get why when you want to split the group up didn't you want Shamari in your group? But now you got a big issue with Shamari being on this song. And like I said a few minutes ago, I believe that Shamari actually could help this song. Because the song is actually, when you listen to the song with just the twins and Aubrey, the song is actually missing something. And I think that something is Shamari. So then uh, we see Elijah, right? So Elijah goes and talks to the twins about the conversation. That he had with Aubrey. Now the twins said that they didn't say it. And I actually believe the twins. I mean from what we've seen in the past. Three episodes of the twins. The twins are very vocal about how they feel. They don't mix or mince their words. So I believe the twins. So then. Um, Child A was in the studio. Listening to Pam's song. Oh Jesus. Misha said, you know, that song makes her nipples get hard. I want to tell Pam that. I'm like, girl, please do not tell Pam that your nipples get hard when you hear this song. Pam already is struggling with her lesbianism. Don't tell her that. Speaking of her lesbianism, Ashley Miller on on Instagram. Go follow, hey guys, go follow Ashley Shy Miller on Instagram. If you guys are not already following her, you should be. Ashley posted a clip this I woke up this morning. Ashley posted a clip. Of when they were in the studio, and I did not see this. I did not see this clip where I, where um, Keely wanted to pat Pam on the back, but she didn't. 
She was like, nope, let me not touch this woman and give her the wrong vibe. Um, no. Okay. So at this point, with Pam's song, they need Aubrey to come down to the studio and, and you know, sing on the track. Woo! So they go get um, Aubrey and, you know, Elijah trying to, you know, give her the notes and all that stuff. I was like, oh my God. Aubrey sounds a hot goddamn mess. <laughs> she sounded a mess. I was like, absolutely not. You know, and it's so funny. Back in the day when Aubrey was in making a, in Danity Kane, because isn't Aubrey a lead on, Aubrey is a lead on Damage, right? Aubrey is one of the leads on Damage, isn't she? Oh, God. Let's see. I believe, I'm going to have to listen to it. I believe Aubrey is one of the leads on Damaged. Actually, she is at the end of the song. Aubrey is on the end of the song. Aubrey is at the end of Damaged. I had to think about it. Aubrey is at the end of Damaged, and that's actually my favorite verse, even though it's a short one. That's my favorite verse of the song. Aubrey's part. <coughs> like if you if you guys if you know me back from when making the band was on television, I said it in one of my reviews. Aubrey was my favorite. I loved Aubrey from season three of Making a Band up until they formed Danny DeCane. I loved Aubrey. Aubrey has a lead. Aubrey has her own solo part on both. I know she has a solo part on Damage. I know she has a solo part on um, Showstopper. Um, do 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 that's Andrea on Stay With Me. I know this on I know I, that's Andrea's voice on Stay With Me. Who else is on Stay? Who else is on Stay With Me? It's Andrea Dawn. Cause that's my favorite song on the first album. Stay with me. I love that song. It's Andrea, it's Don. But like I said, I know on Showstop I know on Showstopper, I believe on Showstopper, Ivory has a, you know, her own little her own solo. And I know I know for a fact on Damage she does. Her voice does not sound the same from Damaged. Girl, what girl on top of having a plastic surgery, did you get something up to your voice box as well? Or is the devil or is God punishing you for sleeping with Donald Trump Jr.? It might be the latter. God might be punishing you for sleeping with Donald Trump Jr. Because hell, Aubrey's been on Broadway. She was in, was she in Rent or was she in Chicago? Which one was she in? I don't know now. I don't know nothing about Chicago, but I, I mean, I don't know nothing about Broadway. But I know Aubrey was on Broadway. They should, suffice it to say, they should have let Aubrey stay sleep. Because, I mean, she was trying to give you Christina Aguilera. But she was more so giving me Christina, I can't scream. Like, she was giving me, you know, Christina, I can scream. You know, she was just giving me a lot, and it wasn't good. But we're going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So, I don't, I'm, if this is a long video, I apologize, you guys. I don't be trying to make these, these videos long. But the show is just that good to me. So, then the vocal coach comes over, right? What is her name again? Cinnamon? Is that the woman named Cinnamon? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, so yeah, Cinnamon, or whatever her name is, she comes over, right? So they go down to the studio, and they listen to the records, right? Um, the vote, the, uh, yeah, with the, um, when it comes to that, uh, that gospel, that, that spiritual gospel, whatever you want to call it, 
you listen to that song and then when you actually listen to the lyrics of the song Pam is like struggling with her I think Pam is like literally struggling with her sexuality I mean damn you just walked like really close to my car and just twisting harder than a motherfucker I don't know if that's a woman or if that's a man no shade Um, I mean, damn, you just literally just walk like. Okay, I guess you know what I'll give it to you. There's a big ass dead ass tree right, a tree branch right here, so I'll give you that. I don't like people walking up on my car like that. I feel like, you know, what we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, so they listen to the song, and like I said, if you listen to the lyrics of the song, you can really kind of see that Pam is struggling with who she is. And I'm not going and in, in this point I'm not gonna make any jokes about it because it, it really is sad. Like I just look at Pam and I'm like, damn Pam. <coughs> it's one thing to find religion, but to completely try to erase who you are is sad. You know what I'm saying? It really is sad. Like I'll tell you guys, I'll give you guys a story time at one point about who you know, about me. Like I'm I'm an open book about who I am and you know the things that I've been through. But it's just really sad when you find religion, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I don't go to church these days because I just feel like when it comes to religion, they're judgmental for no reason. Like, no sin is greater than, if if no sin is greater than the other sin, why do y'all put, home, you know, um, homosexuality at the top of the list? Like, who was it that said it? Like, home, they, it, when, they really weren't in the Bible. I think, and you know, when it comes to, you know what, that's another story for another day. I'm not getting into that. I digress. Let's move on because I don't want to talk about it. But yeah, I just really do feel bad for um, Pam. So then they play the skeleton songs, right? And like I said before, the skeleton song is not something that I would necessarily purchase or buy. I honestly would buy Pam's song. I really would. I would buy Pam's song. I would buy the other songs that they have. But the skeleton song, when you listen to it, it's just eh. And it's not for me. So Coco, Cinnamon, um, Fruity Pebbles, whatever her name is, she feels that they should replace Aubrey on the record and put Shamari on there. I agree with her on that one. It's like I said a few minutes ago. You listen to that record, that record is missing something, and I think it's missing a bigger voice. I think it's missing a big voice because Aubrey doesn't have a big. Aubrey has a screaming voice. <coughs> the twins have kind of a you know a a. The twins voice Their voices are lower So you need somebody That has a powerhouse voice I feel To be on that record And I feel that Shamari Is that powerhouse Now Shamari however Doesn't feel comfortable Replacing Aubrey And I'm going to give it to Shamari You know you don't want to Blindside somebody So I'll give her that So then Mind you Aubrey has not been With the ladies All day at this point Aubrey finally joins the ladies in the kitchen and she tells them that they're having a party, right? And with the party, there's going to be cards with secrets on it, basically. And she's talking about, oh, you know, my stomach has been hurting all day. I, I imagine it would. I imagine your stomach has been hurting all day. I imagine it has. So then she says that, you know, she's made, um, you know, um, 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 Irish the interim uh, queen. Okay. Um, so then, once again, I put in my notes, Keely has the biggest hard on for Aubrey. I'm still not understanding it. I, I want somebody to explain it to me, make it make sense to me, but it doesn't. So they played the a game. You know, they were asked, they were asked who their celebrity crushes were. Um, they asked, they were asked another question. I forgot what it was, but then the biggest question came when... <coughs> It said, if you could replace anyone in the group, who would it be? Or something, something to that nature. One of the twins said, hey, I got somebody. She said, I would replace the queen. That is Aubrey. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm with it. So then they do come up with a name for the group, and the name is Blueprint. Now, mind you, let's backtrack just a little bit to Aubrey, right? Remember I just said Aubrey had allegedly been sick all day, right? But while the girls were talking 
actually, this is when they were trying to come up with the name for the group. Aubrey was in her room on FaceTime with her friend talking cash money shit about the girls. I'm like, Aubrey, girl, you full of it. You're really full of it. But you guys, that's the episode. I don't know how long this video is. I know it's lengthy. I apologize for this video being lengthy, but I do like this show. So I get into, when I get into some of these shows, y'all gonna get long ass reviews. Y'all know that about me by now. If I'm not feeling the show, if, if the show didn't give me anything, you get a short review. But this show, for the last few, for the last four episodes, have given me something to talk about. And I'm enjoying it. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. Until the next one, you guys. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Be blessed. Stay safe. Again, stay safe. Be blessed. Social distance, you guys. That is starting to dis that is starting to dissipate. Social distancing. Baby, I give people a look like bitch back up or I will beat your ass in this store. Oh god, they'll go to booty again. Alright, you guys. I'm off. See y'all in the next one.